Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. We know that greenhouse gases are rapidly rising in the atmosphere. In fact, they've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere in the oceans and we're suffering the dire consequences of this now. We know that greenhouse gases vary quite significantly both in space and time and over the planet. So, for example, there's lots of sources in the Arctic for, for things like CO2 and methane. So greenhouse gases, these greenhouse gases have much higher concentrations in the Arctic, say, than at lower latitudes. But in this video, I'm gonna be focused mostly on how greenhouse gases vary with altitude, with the uh, height that they're, they are in the atmosphere. So I'll get right to it. So in previous videos, and on my blog, paulbeckwith.net, I talked about methane levels as measured from the Copernicus satellite um, and the MEDOP satellites and also, some, also from flask measurements. So in this video, like I said, I'm gonna talk about how, the, how, how things vary with elevation or altitude. So here we have the altitude plotted here and the pressure here. So at the surface is 1013.2 millibar. Go a couple meters above the surface, it's 1000 millibar. Go up to about 11 kilometers, this is the troposphere. All the weather happens within this region. The border here is called the tropopause. And then we up above we have the stratosphere in this region. Above the stratosphere we have the mesosphere and then the thermosphere. So as we go higher and higher in altitude, the pressure drops. It starts off almost linearly. Drop 200 millibar, go up two kilometers. Drop another 200 millibar, you're up a total of four kilometers. It's pretty linear, but it's, it does taper up here in this um, nonlinear fashion. So 500 millibar is about halfway up through the atmosphere. 300 millibar is getting about uh, eight kilometers high. When you get down to about 200 millibar or so, you're about 11 kilometers high. So this is where the, this is the top of the troposphere. Like I said, all the weather happens in the lower atmosphere. This is the average height of the troposphere, 11 kilometers. If you go up to the Arctic, the air is colder. It compresses closer to the ground. So the troposphere is actually at about seven kilometers instead of 11. At the equator, the air is very warm, it expands. The troposphere is much, much higher. It's at about 17 kilometers, but 11 is about the average. Okay, so then the jet streams are roughly in this region where the troposphere meets the stratosphere in the region called the tropopause. Okay, so if you go down to 50 millibar, okay, you're actually well up uh, over 20 kilometers high, well up into the stratosphere. That becomes important when we talk about the ozone distribution. Now, the composition of the atmosphere, 78% of the atmosphere by volume is nitrogen, N2. The molecular weight of nitrogen is 30. So think of that as a mass. Oxygen comprises almost 21%. The molecular weight is 32. And then argon comes next, just under a percent, and then you have the trace gases. So, some, so for example, methane, CH4, one carbon, four hydrogens, that's a molecular weight of 16, very, very light, can rise up. Water vapor, um, H2O, two hydrogens and an oxygen. Okay, the oxygen is 16. The two hydrogens bring it up to 18, lighter, much lighter than 30 nitrogen lighter than okay so basically so it will rise rise up okay so those are the basics that are important now this is the copernicus data um and, and, and this is methane in particular at the surface looking at the north pole view and this is on saturday december 15th the latest data that is posted there and I've shown this in previous videos, and this is with a scale change that happened so that you can see all of the detail um, much better. So let's have a look. Um, I've stored some images from Copernicus. 
Okay, so uh, let me come down here to bring the scale down so you can see it. And okay, so so this is uh, December 15th at the surface. So what happens as you go up in altitude? The pressure drops. So this is about one and a half kilometers high. The pressure is 850 millibar. And what you can see is that the green areas here, which are from 1760 or so to 1820, you know, this whole green area in background um, becomes basically the yellow and the oranges, so 1820 to 1880. So the high methane concentration point sources on the surface and regions gets dispersed as you go up in the atmosphere by the global circulation, the wind patterns, and it gets dispersed so the higher levels are seen here. Let's go up even higher to about halfway up through this troposphere. Okay, 500 millibar pressure. And you can see the levels are, you know, in the 1880 to 1920 region here, the red areas. And as you go up even higher, pressure drops even more. This is 300 millibar. Now the methane is being spread out and dispersed. Okay, uh, more widespread. And also it's also being lost to, um, to OH star. Okay, excited um, to hydroxyl ions. And then as you go up, to about this so this is about 20 plus kilometers this is well into the stratosphere 50 millibar pressure you actually see a deficit here the methane levels are very low here and they're higher around the edge there's like a hole here okay so this is the pattern of methane in the atmosphere now this is um this is and this is the total column uh, methane now if you look at the aerosols Okay, aerosols are any, is any non-water uh, substances. So it's, it's not particulate, but it's non, um, it, it could be, you know, you, it could be particulates actually, and, and ash and coal. It's, it's any, 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 any substance that's non-water basically in the atmosphere. And what you can see here is you can see the pattern. This is Greenland and the North Pole, and this is the pattern. So these aerosols here, it turns out, and I'll show you in a minute, these are mostly from dust from the deserts. These aerosols up here, this, 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 these are mostly sea salt. And over here, this is from industrial sources for the most part. These are, these are sulfate aerosols, uh, burning biomass um, aerosols, things like that. So if I divide it up, if we divide it up here, this is the dust aerosols, these two regions here, and this is the sea salt aerosols up here, these regions here. This is the biomass burning aerosols in these regions, and the sulfate aerosols, and when you add all these things up, then you get the, the total aerosol content, which I showed you here. Okay, so you get this is the total aerosol content. So we can get that kind of information too from Copernicus. And now we'll look now let's look at CO2 here. So I have to if I just go to carbon dioxide forecast here, um, this is CO2 at the surface. And you can see the scale here. Okay, I'll bring it right down to the bottom. And now let's bring up this. Okay, so this is at the surface. So what you can see here is you can see these hot spots from industrial sources. You know, over the continent, it's mostly these, the, this sort of light um, yellowish color, like we're in here. So the nominal level right now is about 410 parts per, per million in the atmosphere. Okay, so in this region we have here, you know, over the continents, the oceans are lower. Okay, more like in these regions, the, the, the CO2 over those regions, and then we have these hot spots here. Okay, now as we go up in elevation or altitude to 1.5 kilometers, 850 millibar, you can see that the, the yellow, we're still yellows throughout, the spots are being dispersed. And as we go up even more, 
Okay, so the basically there's a higher higher levels of CO2, these reddish areas up here. Uh, at 500 millibar, the CO2 levels are actually higher. The dispersed CO2 over the whole region is higher than it is at the surface. And as this is 300 millibar, starts to decrease as the, the air, we're going higher and higher up. And then this is 50 millibar. Okay, and it's showing the background here very high. I don't know if that's uh, correct or not. That's an artifact of the system measurement. This is the total column. We can also, from Copernicus, we can get information on carbon monoxide, CO, going up. This is the levels at the surface. It shows you where all the industrial regions are quite clearly. You get C, carbon monoxide from incomplete combustion. Then these are particulates that are being that are measured by the satellite sensors, PM 2.5. It's all particles that are 2.5 micron and smaller. These are the very, these are the ones that are very damaging to human health because they can get lodged deep inside the lung. And this is PM 10, so any particles that are 10 micron or smaller. So of course, there's always going to be PM 10 is going to show more um, more aerosols than, than PM 2.5 always because PM 2.5 is, is, is a subset of PM 10 and this is SO2 at the surface. Okay, so we have all of these different things that, that can be seen from the CAM satellite. Now, the, there's a couple satellites called MEDOPS 1 and MEDOPS 2 and they have infrared atmospheric sounding interferometers, IASIs on them and they can measure lots of different things. So these are some of the data sets that can be measured. You can get temperatures, you can get mixing ratios of water vapor, ozone, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and methane from two different satellites in two different time frames every single day. So this is data from Sunday the 16th. You can get information on clouds, you can get information on outgoing long wave radiation or um, basically heat coming outgoing from the from the surface of the earth upwards and out into space so you can get lots of different parameters so i'm going to show you some of these here okay so this is the um so i just went over here i'm looking at mixing ratio of methane at some of the satellite data just click on those data sets and you get the information here so this is far up into space um, and what we can see is it gives you the mean 545 parts per billion, the ratio, the, the range rather, 80 to 1048, 80 up here in the poles. Most of the methane is in here, uh, circling, um, straddling the equator from minus 30 to plus 30 degrees in latitude. And it reaches these levels here, uh, the maximum level is 1048, somewhere in, in there. Okay, now as you go up, I'm looking at the color change here, and uh, you can see distinct changes here when you get up. So we're going lower and lower to the surface, but we're still up extremely high. And here you can see we're still straddling the equator um, in terms of the highest values, and the poles have much less concentration. And then you start going up uh, 50 millibar. This is about just over 20 kilometers or so. Okay, so now you can see that the levels of methane here are, so the maximum values are occurring here. Again, it's higher around in the equator, lower towards the poles, okay, when the, when the gases are, are mixed by the atmosphere. Okay, and then we can go up higher, and as we get, um, so the pressure is increasing, we're getting closer and closer to the ground, this is what we get at the surface. Okay, so at the surface, the concentrations are, the mean is 1800, okay, and this is the range, and you can see it's more or less dispersed according to this. This does not resolve the individual hotspots that we saw with the Copernicus satellite. Okay, but you, I highly recommend that you go and you have a look at this, at, you know, just click on the images and see how the methane is varying with elevation. And I see I'm going to be running out of time, so I'm going to um, continue this in, in another video. So thank you for listening, and please check out my website, paulbeckwith.net.